Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can apply patterns to everyday objects in Illustrator. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's look and see what we are trying to achieve. You'll see here that I have this sort of pillow shape that is bent in on the sides, much as a pillow that you make might look. Well, I've applied a pattern to this shape, and you can see that the pattern is actually squished up a little bit at the sides of the shape, as it would be if this were a fabric pillow. The pattern in the middle would be much larger, and round the edges it would start to get much smaller. And I'm going to show you how you can achieve this look with any pattern, whether it's a pattern that you download or one that you make yourself. To get started, I've created a brand new document. It's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels, but yours can be any size that you like. I'm going to make my pillow rectangular, so I'm grabbing the rectangle tool here. I've got a fill color, but no stroke. I'm just going to drag out a rectangular shape for my pillow. And here it is here, a rectangle. Now I want to pull in the side, so the easiest way to do that is with a warp effect. So I'll choose Effect and then Warp. And I'm going to choose Bulge because that option is to blow out the sides of this shape. But if we go in a negative direction, we're going to suck them in. So this is a typical Bulge effect, but we're going to suck inwards. So I'm going to set this to about 23%, well it's minus 23% in a vertical direction. So I'm just going to click OK and that's brought in the sides. Now let's choose Effect, Warp and Bulge all over again. And we don't want to edit the previous one, we want to leave that in place, but we do want to apply a new effect. So this is going to give us a second hit at it. This time I'm going to choose Horizontal. I'm going to use about the same value or something fairly similar. Actually, it's minus 12% this time. So I've got this thing that looks like a pillow. So I'm going to click OK. Now I'm working in a very recent version of Illustrator, so it's got this rounded corners tool. So I can just drag in here to round the corners. If you don't have that tool where you can bring the rounded corners in yourself, you can choose Effect and then Stylize and choose Rounded Corners and then go and make a rounded corner for your shape. But mine's looking pretty good here. So what I want to do is to make this into a shape. Right now, this is really just a rectangle with effects applied to it. You can see it's a rectangle with warp effects applied to it. Well, what I'm going to do is choose Object and then Expand Appearance. Expand and Expand Appearance are identical. You just choose whichever one is visible. So there is my basic pillow shape. Now I'm going to create a shape for my pattern. So I'm going to create another rectangle. So I'm just going to select the rectangle tool here. Just drag over the pillow shape so I have something that's large enough for my pattern. Now I could create my own pattern, but I'm just going to borrow one of Illustrator's. So I'm going to go to Window and then Swatches. And in the Swatches palette, you have access to the patterns that are shipped with Illustrator. So I'm going to click this drop down list here and go to Open Swatch Library and then Patterns. And there are basic graphic patterns, which are lines and textures. There are some nature patterns, which are foliage and animal skins, and some decorative patterns as well. I'm going to choose Vonster Patterns in the decorative group. And here are the Vonster patterns. With my rectangle selected and the fill color selected, I'm just going to click on one of these patterns. And this is the one I'm going to use. Now I've got a rectangle with a pattern on it. I've got a basic pillow shape. And what I need to do next is to warp this pattern so that we can actually make it fit the pillow in just a minute. To do that with the rectangle selected that has the pattern in it, I'm going to choose Object and then Envelope Distort and then Make with Mesh because I want to create my own mesh. And I'm going to set this to a six column by six row mesh. And it's got blue lines in it because this layer is working on blue color, but we're going to change that in just a minute. So I'll just click OK. Now I'm going to double click on this word layer here and I'm going to change this color from light blue to something that we can actually see. I think this green will be better. So you can see the green grid over this rectangle. There's one other setting that we need to check before we go to this next step. I'm going to choose Object and then back to Envelope Distort and I'm going to Envelope Options. 
The reason for this is we have to make sure that Distort Patterns is selected. If you don't have that, you'll just be distorting the shape, but not the pattern. And since we came here to distort the pattern, then obviously we need to be distorting it. So let's make sure that this checkbox is selected for Distort Pattern Fills and click OK. Now I'm going to the Direct Selection tool. I'm going to start distorting this pattern. So I want to make sure that I've got the anchor point selected and I'm just going to start pulling these away. So in the middle of my shape, I want to pull these anchor points away from the center, which is going to give me my slightly larger pattern in the middle of this pillow. And I'm just using the pillow shape underneath as a reference point for how it's all going to fit. And then around the edges of the pillow, you'll find that the pattern is going to bunch up a little bit because that's how the fabric would be bent if you actually sewed this into a pillow. If you're unsure, go into your living room and have a look at a pillow on your living room couch and you'll see how the patterns are bending around. So we want to scrunch up the pattern here at the very edge and stretch it at the middle. And we want the pattern lines to pretty much follow that sort of bulge shape or that warped shape that we made from our rectangle. Now you're going to make a much better job of this than me. I just want you to see what it is that you're going to be using and how this effect works rather than seeing a perfect example. But you can spend some time warping your pattern nicely this way. But I'm just going to make a couple more changes here. I can drag on the anchor point, but of course I can drag on the lines as well. Oh, something just took off a little bit there. Okay, so once I've got my pattern distorted nicely, I'm just going to click away from that. The next thing to do is to clip this pattern shape to the underlying pillow. So I'm just going to grab this pillow path and move it above my pattern shape. So this is the path I'm following, but I want to crop out my pattern to match it. So I'm just going to select the path here now and I'm going to turn off both the fill and the stroke, but I've still got it selected going to click on the envelope underneath and I'm going to right click on the image and choose Make Clipping Mask. And now I have my warped pattern applied to my pillow shape. So really that's pretty much the effect created. The only trick from here on in is how do you get this thing apart if you need to make some edits to it. Well let's have a look in our Layers palette. I'm just making some larger panel icons here. So I'm going to click to open the clipping group and you can see here that we have our clipping mask shape and we also have our envelope. Now to access the pattern here, we're going to need to break into our envelope. So I'm going to select the envelope layer. This gives me access to the warp mesh. So I could come in here and I could individually continue to edit the mesh points here by selecting on them and just dragging them. And that will affect the pattern underlying the warp mesh. But what if I want to actually edit the pattern itself? Well, I'm going to click on Envelope here and go to Object, Envelope, Distort, Edit Contents. And that gives me access to the actual contents of this envelope. And here for the first time we get access to this pattern. So with the fill selected and with this layer selected, I can then go and change the pattern fill. I'm going to select a different pattern fill. The beauty of the solution that we've built here is that this pattern fill is being distorted using that same mesh. So we don't have to recreate the mesh or the clipping mask. Everything's been done for us. All we need to do is say, yes, this is the pattern we now want to use and choose object and then envelope distort and then back to this time edit envelope. And that closes up that panel so that it's now the envelope, the mesh warp that we are editing and not the contents, the pattern itself. So once we're happy with that, we're back to exactly where we were. 
So you now know not only how to make a pillow shape using the warp tools, but also how to fill a shape and warp the pattern and then use this warped pattern with the original shape as a clipping mask. Now to finish, I'm just going to show you how to create that shadow. I'm going to select the ellipse tool and I'm going to drag out a circle. So I'm just holding shift as I click to create a circle. And then I'm going to the gradient tool and I'm going to fill this circle with a gradient. And it's going to be a radial gradient. So I'm just going to click here on radial and I want it reversed because I want it darker in the middle and lighter on the outside. And then I'm just going to click the selection tool and I'm going to smoosh this circle. So I'm just going to drag down so that it then becomes an oval. Now I can just place it underneath my cushion. If it's a little bit too dark, as it is for me, I can go to the appearance panel for the shape and select opacity. And I'm just going to wind down its opacity. And I'm just going to deselect the shape. So there is our process for applying a pattern to a shape and making sure that it is bent and clipped appropriately. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.